Okay, so my name's Martin Ainsworth, and welcome to this light bite tutorial, no frills. And today I'm going to answer the question, how do I quickly reproduce the tilt shift effect using motion and final cut without any additional plugins? Um, first of all, we need to understand the principle of tilt shift photography. Well, actually, no we don't. We just need to go and grab the footage that we want to use. Uh, the trick with the footage that we want to use is to make sure that you are a reasonable distance away from your subject or at a reasonable elevation looking down. I have two clips here from videoblocks.com and I'm going to quickly use these clips to simulate the tilt shift effect. So first of all I'm going to drag my piece of footage into my sequence. I'm going to say yes because I want the footage and the sequence uh, settings to match. Now there's a few magic numbers here that I use but you're welcome to experiment and try your own. Okay. First of all, I'm going to right-click the footage, and I'm going to change the speed. And I'm going to increase the speed to 300%. I'm going to turn off frame blending and scale attributes, because I just want to increase it to 300%. I'm going to click OK. It's going to reduce it. Now, what I get now is a piece of footage that's just purely speeded up. I'm going to render it, and now it's rendered. A quick watch so I can see that it's just purely speeded up. Quick tip here, the Apple F12 allows you to view in full screen. So I can see mm, it's just speeded up there, Apple F12 to go back. Now what I want to add to this is a strobe effect. Uh, I can go and find the strobe in the help if I'm not entirely sure where it is. Or I can go straight to the effects, video filters, and I want to find the time strobe. I'm gonna go into my filters, double click my footage, now here we can see that it's going to change it to strobe 15. Now anything between 5 and 30, um, often people like 30, it's a little bit smoother. I prefer to go to a lower number of say 12 because it gives a little bit more of that uh, jittery effect. So I'm going to render this. Let's have a quick look at this footage. So we've got that jerkiness that we want to the footage. So what we're going to do is we're going to now simulate the tilting and shifting of the lens. A traditional lens focus depth of field front to back. We're going to give the depth of field top to bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click the footage and we're going to send it to motion. I'm going to call it tilt one. And that's going to open up in motion. So here we go, so here's our footage in motion. I'm going to press the F5 so I can see my layers. And I'm going to reduce my footage to fit in window so I can see it. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to expand the group and I want to duplicate this piece of footage. I want to draw a mask around what I want to keep and I want to blur the background. So I'm going to select the background and I'm going to add a filter which is blur. Now I do like a good Gaussian blur. The reason I like Gaussian blur over defocus is because it's a lot harsher whereas a defocus can be a lot softer. I'm going to turn off the top layer and I'm going to increase the amount to around about 7. So it's quite heavily out of focus. I'm going to uh, select my top footage I'm just going to Apple and minus, and I, what I want to do now is I want to draw a mask on this footage. So I want to just purely reveal this piece of traffic across here. I'm going to draw around these boats here. I'm going to keep this boat in just here, and I'm doing a very, very rough mask around the outside. Now I can see now that I've got quite a sharp mask around the outside. I've got some very harsh lines. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that the mask feather is all the way up to 100%. You can play with this depending on your preference. But normally if you've just got simple lines going across, I just go with quite a, a heavy feather. I'm going to save this. And I'm going to switch back over to Final Cut. So all I'm going to do now, I'm going to add to this, I'm going to double click my footage, I'm going to add the effects 
of color correction three-way. In my color correction three-way filter, I'm going to reduce the blacks. I'm going to increase the mids. I'm going to lower the whites very slightly, but I'm going to significantly increase the saturation. The reason I want to do this is we want the reds, the greens, and the blues to look quite unnatural. Uh, the reds, greens, and blues are the ones that show up most when uh, doing any kind of model village painting and bits and pieces. So those are the colors that we really, really want to pop out. Uh, onto this, we're going to add a vignette around the outside. And so I'm going to type in and find it very quickly, stylize vignette. I do find the help menu very good and quick at getting the effects that I want to find if I'm not entirely sure where they are. So in this stylize, I'm going to go to my stylize filter for my vignette and I'm just going to increase its size very slightly, increase the fall off, darken it slightly more and in this I'm going to also increase the saturation so it just pops the colors in the corners. For the final render So here we go, here is our footage, nicely rendered, Apple F12, and here we have our tilt shift effect. Uh, my name is Martin Ainsworth, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.